Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Test and Tune. Today, I'm playing with a snap-on battery charger. Now, this is a battery charger that I think all men really want to have in their garage. Um, it's about 20 years old. It was given to me by a friend. Now, one of the sort of main mechanics that I used to, um, that I learned a lot of, learn a lot from sort of 15, 20 years ago, this is his battery charger. Um, I remember when he bought it, he was so excited about it. I know somebody has had a look inside. We can see that the switch is sort of pulled apart in there, uh, but they've lost interest in trying to fix it. And I thought I would love to have a go at it and just see if we can bring it back to life. Cause I need a battery charger. The Chinese ones I've been buying just don't seem to last. And I know that these things, they're old school. There's not really much electronics going on. It's a switch, a transformer. Yeah, all right, let's pull it apart. Let's see if we can work out if there's a way to fix it. I did do a little bit of Googling and these rotary timer switches are pretty common to fail. I'm hoping, well, I don't know. We'll see what, see what it looks like once we get it apart. But you can actually buy them uh, from America and they're about $40 to get a new switch, which is about what a whole Chinese battery charger costs. But if that's the case, it's probably gonna be money well spent. But let's get it pulled apart, get it cleaned up, see what we can make of it. So this hasn't been used in a long time. It's been sitting in the back of a workshop for somewhere between five and 10 years. Um, I'm gonna try and get some of this muck off it. See how bad the actual casing looks. Oh, it's filthy. Oh no, it pulls the paint off. Well, we don't wanna do that, do we? Ah, oh, it's a shame. Okay, okay. It's funny that Snap-on we're using paint. I thought that would be a sticker. I've just sprayed it with a really light general purpose degreaser. I really didn't think it was gonna um, affect the paint. Old school, yeah, all this is painted. Wow. Mind you, they must have used worse paint on the logo than they have on the rest of it. All right, I'll keep cleaning it up and we'll see if we can pull it apart and see how bad it looks inside. Actually, this is what we're dealing with here. Years of workshop muck. Well, that's sort of the first clean. Uh, I haven't taken it apart yet, obviously, but at least we can touch it now without getting too dirty. But it is, it's just coated. Obviously we've got the, that's in every vent. It's filthy. Um, let's get the side off and we'll see if, it looks like it's something we're gonna be able to fix today or if we're gonna need to order parts. I'm hoping, I mean, from what I understand, Obviously that timer switch is broken. Maybe it's just broken in a way that I can fix it. I won't even have to order any parts. That would be nice. Or maybe fix it with a different switch and not a timer switch. We'll find out. And this is old school real tools. There's no plastic here. So I'm hoping it's repairable. Uh, I should note, um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not an electrical engineer. Don't try this at home. All right, well, we've got a lot of dust. And we've got the remains of the switch. Okay, and the knob. Okay, okay. So the switch has come, ah, the switch has broken. The case is broken on the switch. So you can see just here, that's where the switch broke. All right, I might pull it apart. We'll see if we can work with that. Maybe some epoxy, see what we can do. Actually, before I turn the camera off, just bask in the brilliance that is this thing. Wow, that is a serious transformer. I'm gonna have to clean this before we uh, try and fire it up because that's gonna get hot and there's a lot of dust and shit to burn. All right, so I've had a couple of extra searches inside the um, inside the battery charger, and I think I've got all of the components, but I'll take it apart. It, uh, it just doesn't want to work, which might be why, uh, I broke it, 
which might be why it um, got pulled apart in the first place. Yeah, so I have all of the components, but not for the life of me can I get it to function as a timer. Um, so I'm going to have to order one, uh, and for the sake of not wasting too much more time today, which has been about 40 minutes trying to put this back together, I'm just going to put it back together as a stationary switch. So it won't have the timer function, but it will have... Well, I should just be able to turn it on. So that should go down like that. I'm going to leave all the timer mechanism out. This is still spring-loaded, but it won't have any lock on it, so we'll see what happens. Probably not much, but it should. Oh, I'm still... Okay. I'll take this actual spring mechanism out. So now it is literally just a position switch. Okay, what I might do is disconnect that and just make sure that it's going to function in the positions that we need it to. And that'll be off. Okay, off. Oh, or on. Off, on, off, on. Okay, that'll be fine. Right, let me get it back together. All right, so before everybody has a heart attack, just keep in mind I'm going to have to buy a new switch. But to test the rest of the battery charger. Let's add a little bit of glue, give this some strength, because it was the back housing part that was broken, whether it was broken because somebody tried to pull it apart, or if it was broken because it broke, and that's what caused all the timer problems, we will never know. But that will make it nice and strong. Uh, from that point, we shall plonk this one back in. Of course, it's going in with none of the timer mechanisms or the spring. And I think then this can go in. And I did add some. Not there, that's contact cleaner. I did add some uh, lithium grease to the actual trigger mechanism inside. Just try and make it a bit smoother. Isn't that? Ah, it must have a right. So it has a lock to stop it going too far in the case. So if we put that on. That'll be timer. And off and on. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so we've got it reconnected. It, it functions. It just feels weird without the timer mechanism, but I think we're gonna be right. We've got neutral. Yeah, yeah, we should be okay. Okay, so it's all reconnected to the same points that it was before. And it's just gonna be a matter of seeing if we can get it to line up and work. All right, I've got the switch reconnected in exactly the same way. So hopefully all the wiring is was correct and it wasn't disconnected a while ago. Um, just get the holes to line up. Okay. And now we should be able to get this button put back on. And I mean, if the timer was working, it will turn off and then we should be able to go on. Alrighty. I'm not sure how bad that footage is going to be. I sort of got interrupted there, but we have a switch which I think is going to do what we need it to. I won't have the timer function, but if I'm using it, I'm using it for programming, so I'm going to be on and then we're off. But I need to clean in here. Now, I did just give it a quick vacuum. I'm going to take this side panel off and I think just try and clean it out with contact cleaner. All right, I just want to show you what we're dealing with here. So you see I've sort of wiped in there just before. Um, the thing I'm a bit worried about is this fan. 
Looks filthy. I'm gonna contact clean and air blast it. We'll see how clean we can make all this. It's not. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna do something I probably shouldn't do, but I, I hope that the safety earth system in this building works okay. So I've got a battery hooked up to it. Not a brilliant battery. Um, got it set on low and we're gonna turn it on and see if any smoke comes out or if it works or if we get amps. So wish me luck. Hey, the fan works. You can hear it humming away. It's reading about shit. Does the amp gauge work? It does. It's a little bit off. Let's turn it back on. And we'll turn the amps. Okay. It turns it off. Still about 20 amps. We'll go to high. Ooh, let's pump in some juice now. I don't like that it vibrates. I don't know why that would be. Unless it's just loose. Could be the fan. All right, well, it works. Let's pull power. All right, guys, we're clean. Everything's looking good. Oh, got a snap-on charger. Uh, one thing I did notice that I need to fix, I need to make sure we haven't got any current in this. But that wire is actually worn through. Um, so it's worn through on that bar there. So I might just cut that and put some heat shrink over it. Um, but then we'll just put it back together. I think we're good to go. Maybe that was the reason it initially got pulled apart. Oh, super basic bits of equipment though. All right, sweating. Let's get this thing put back together. All right, well, it's just about time to put it back together. Um, I mean, it's not as clean as I would like, but I think we're gonna have to uh, live with it. Got the two lots of heat shrink on that wire that was burnt through. Um, plenty of clearance now, so we should be good. One thing I have done, I did notice there was a wooden shock under here, and I did run it before and it vibrated quite a lot. And then I noticed that there was a wooden shock just in there. I don't know if the car's gonna focus, the phone. Um, so I've replaced, put the wooden shock that was on the floor on that side so hopefully once it goes back together it won't make so much noise but it was vibrating so crazily before all right let me get it screwed back together um i'm gonna have to find a few new bolts but should be good i'm looking forward to seeing if it's gonna work all right here it is the moment of truth uh what you haven't seen on camera there's been way more cleaning than i ever anticipated um i'm not going to test it on the battery i was tested on i'm going to put it on the car the ignition is currently on Let's see what amps this thing outputs. So it's reading, I don't know, five or six, and it's outputting five or six. Let's turn it up. It's about seven or eight. Eight. Let's see if it'll do it. Oh, it's working. So there we see about 15. 15. So this car would, it would take a hell of a lot more than 15 if it could output it. Hmm. The charger might not be any good. Yeah, I'll put the headlights on. Yep. 15's all it wants to output. Okay, so you've got the voltmeter on. The car's sitting at 11.5 volts. That's with everything running. Let's turn this on. Comes up to 11.8, 15 and a half amps. And turn the car off. Well, it's not enough. It just doesn't output enough. And because the case is all bent up, 
The vibrations are crazy. But obviously we could fix that. All right, so it's been going for a bit. Um, you can see we're up to 13 volts on the car. Still cranking at 10 amps, but it's not enough to do what I need to do, which is program these things. Um, I could fix the humming if I maybe put some washers on the case or put the ca I don't know. I put it back together like three times trying to make sure it was solid, but it definitely vibrates. But I'll just show you what happens with these when I turn the car on because it's no good. So key in. Lights are off. And yeah, it drops straight down to 12.6. And this is with it on max. 12.4, eight amps, let's go back up to max. So it's putting a few more amps in, but definitely not enough to do any coding work on this car. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do, let's turn it off. The last thing I'm gonna do is just connect the voltmeter straight to it and just see the maximum volts that it will output when it's not connected to a car because that's a bit disappointing. However, when these battery chargers come out, which, I mean, it was probably late 90s, you didn't need to program cars. All you needed to do was pump a load of amps into the battery. And the way it's working at the moment is probably fine for actually charging the battery. Just no good for programming. So what we'll do, we will disconnect this one and I'll just plug that straight into there. Make sure that's not gonna short out on anything. That one's still connected. All right, we'll turn it on. I'll go, I'll go to low, cause it might just pop the voltmeter. Okay, so it's, it must be doing something. It's sensed there's no load. It's putting out 10 volts. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so the low setting is 10 volts. Medium setting is 11.8 and high is 12.7. It's just a battery charger. It's just a battery charger which is kind of what it says. And everything on here is all about charging batteries, using it as a booster. I bet it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's just not designed for programming cars. Well, at least we fixed it. I kind of wanted one forever. I thought they were like this really good piece of equipment to have in your workshop, but maybe they were 20 years ago. Looks like the new one from Snap-on's like $27 million. Um, so I won't be getting that, but I think we're gonna have to do a PC power supply build. because so I need a big 70 amp plus power supply for coding cars. All right guys, I'll end it off there. Thank you for watching Test and Tune.